I'm Yuki. I'll be presenting the first half of the session today as an Open Data Ambassador in training. A um, little bit about myself. I'm a recent graduate of Barnard College at Columbia University, where I studied urban studies, education, and political science. Currently, I'm, a, I'm pursuing a master's degree at NYU Center for Urban Science and Progress. And I'm also a research assistant for the GovLab, where I'm involved in a variety of open data research projects. And even though I'm currently studying urban data science, I have a social science background, and I recently switched to engineering and data-related field. So I totally understand what it feels like to be new to data and how it can be difficult sometimes. It's really great to be here today, and I'm super excited to learn with you. I'll pass it to Sarah. Great. Thanks, Yuki. I'm Sarah Escobal. I am also an open data ambassador um, and an open data coordinator with New York City Parks and Recreation. Um, so I work for a division called Innovation and Performance Management, where part of the work that we do in my division is we help clean up and make data, data that we have more accessible to agency staff. Um, but we also prepare it before it gets posted onto Open Data's website. And so what that means is that we work with different divisions across the parks department, looking into their data so that we can translate it and make it a bit more user friendly for the public before publishing it on the Open Data website. And I'm going to put in the chat one of my favorite Open Data um, uh, data sets that the parks department has published is this one. It's called Urban Park Ranger Animal Condition Response. Um, it's just really interesting to see all the different types of uh, calls that the park rangers get um, for the diverse wildlife that we have in New York City. And there's plenty of raccoon responses. Um, and I will pass it to Vanessa. Sorry, before we begin, I just want to quickly mention that this presentation was pre um, prepared by MODA and Meta NYC, um, who are the co-organizers co of this Open Data Week. So we're now going to talk about a brief history of New York City Open Data. Um, a lot of people think that open data is relatively new phenomenon, but actually the efforts to make government data more transparent and accessible has been around for a while. And so to better understand how we got to the launch of New York City open data and the passage of New York City open data law, we're going to look at some of the milestones in the history. So first, the origin of the open data movement can be traced back to the late 19th and early 20th century during the progressive era when many government reforms happened due to the wake of city scandals. And one of the reforms um, was the launch of new publication called City Record, which publishes city's notices, updates, purchases, and hiring. And it started in AD 73 and still being made available today. And you can actually see the early editions of city records on the internet through NYU's um, city record project. And jumping to some decades ahead to 1960s, the Freedom of Information Legislation or FOIL was passed on federal level, but also by state government as well. And FOIL, was, uh, FOIL made government information available upon request meaning that if you're looking for some specific data, you can request it. And if the information exists, the government can share it with you. Thus, this concept of requesting information and receiving that from the government was quite revolutionary at the time. And several decades later in 1993, New York City released its first public data directory. Um, this publicized what kind of data is available in city agencies through FOIL, and this was advancement from FOIL because with FOIL you had to know what kind of data exactly you're looking for, but with the release of this directory, someone could just now see the list and know um, what data was available at each agency. And in 2012, Thanks to the efforts of open data advocates, city staff, and elected officials, New York City open data law was passed. And what's unique about New York City's open data is that it's a law, not an executive order, um, like how it is in other cities. And this means that New York City open data is here to stay regardless of administration. And this is a hugely from foil and directory because um, the data is now available, made public by default, not by request. And our city is actually full of data points that you can access on New York City Open Data, from sidewalk, recycling bins, parking tickets, 
restaurant inspection, parks, taxi ridership, you name it. And of course, in order for data to be open data, there are some criteria the city agencies have to follow. And first, data must be machine readable, which means that it has to be something that can be presented in a table um, with rows and columns so that computers can understand. So for example, the data set with information and trees would have rows of each tree with columns representing their species, size, um, location, and more. And so what's on this slide is a map showing the original plan for Central Park, which is not a machine readable formatted data. So this is not an open data. And another criteria is that open data cannot be something that is confidential or private. So these data sets on open data are carefully reviewed to make sure that no personal information is included. An exception to this includes the city-wide payroll data. So this data set with um, with names of city employees and then their salaries are made available due to high demand from the public and to increase transparency. And today, New York City Open Data is made possible with collaboration among New York City Open Data team, MODA, DOIT, and city agencies and other corresponding open data coordinators, which Sarah is one for the parks department. And there are about 100 coordinators who are well-versed in their agency's data. So open data coordinators work with open data team to identify, structure, document, publish, update, and share their agency's open data sets. So how is the open data being used? Um, I'm going to introduce some examples here. So this is open data project gallery, which is a library um, of data projects that was built on New York City open data. For example, um, the middle one, um, is on New York City restaurant violations, which was built on the data set published by Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, which includes the grades for um, restaurant inspections. And this is New York City maps, um, which focuses more specifically on the spatial visualizations using data sets. And this is WeGov NYC, my personal favorite, um, which is a portal that aggregates various data sets from New York City Open Data and provides profiles of New York City government agencies and their capital projects and beyond. So let's go to New York City Open Data website. Um, you can search in New York City Open Data and it's probably the first one on that pops up. And when you first land on this page, you can start typing what you're looking for or interested in is in the search box in the middle. And you can also go to the navigation bar and click data to see an overview of more than 3,000 data sets on this platform. And you can see that users can access data in different priorities. So for example, you can see the list of data sets by agency, category, popular data sets, or new data sets. So let's explore and start with typing 311 in the search bar. <clears throat> and just quickly, New York City 311 is a government resource for assistance and general information outside of emergency situations. And I'm sure many of you know this service and maybe have used it in the past. And it's, so it's open 24 hours, 365 days, and available in over 175 languages and for roughly 3,600 government services. And 311 is accessible via phone, website, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and mobile apps. Um, so let's go back to the website. When you enter 311, um, this should be the result of the search. Um, for this 311 exercise, let the top result, um, the 311 service request is the one we want to use. And when you click um, the, the data set title, you will be taken to this page. And there's a lot of information here. Um, this page includes um, the number of rows and columns, which, um, which date it was last updated, how frequently it's been updated, and how much data has been viewed and downloaded. And in addition, you can also view the data sets data dictionary, which is, which, meant, which is meant to show you what data set entails. And this is how New York City Open Data organizes their data dictionary. And I would note that each you know, data platforms and repository might have different standards for data dictionary. And sometimes it doesn't even come with that dictionary. And recently I actually made my own data dictionary for the data sets my team was using. 
and because they didn't have one. Um, but I actually used a format of New York City Open Data, um, which gives the description of each column and notes on some details that you should know about the data sets. So now I'll pass it to Sarah, who will, be who will demonstrate how you can filter and visualize um, data on New York City Open Data. Great. Thank you so much, Yuki. Um, just a quick check. Can you all see my screen? Heads up? Thumbs up? Okay, great. Um, awesome. Okay, so now that we've looked at uh, 311 data and we've seen it's more than 27 million rows, um, let's talk about how we can break it down into something a bit more usable. So when you're on the overview page of a data set, you'll see in the upper right hand corner, there's a button called view data. And when we click on it, we see that there's a lot to this data set. So there's over 41 columns and 27 million rows, which makes sense uh, since this data does go back to 2010. But rather than scrolling through every single record, there is an easier way to um, find the data that we're interested in. And that way is through filtering. So we can click on the filter tool to narrow down what we're looking at, which is especially data, uh, helpful when dealing with large data sets such as this one. And in this particular example, we filtered to only display 3-in-1 service requests in Queens Community Board 1. But even after that filter, there's still more than 500,000 records. So looking at this data set, I see a few more columns that I can filter on. So you can filter on multiple things. Um, so here we filtered on created date and agency to only show requests that were made after January 1st and assigned to the Department of Sanitation. And this results in only 289 records, which is far fewer than the original 27 million. Another thing I want to point out is how you can export data. So you can actually download the filter data to work in a tool that you're more familiar with, like Excel or Google Sheets. Um, there's a lot of different formats to download the data in. So if you're unsure of which one to select, I always recommend just going for CSV for Excel. OK, so what if now you want to look at a chart or a graph of the data? Like I mentioned before, you can download this data and you can create your visualization in Excel or Google Sheets. Um, however, you can also easily create a visualization without downloading anything or even leaving the open data website. So going back to the overview page of the data set, you can see again in the upper right hand corner, there's this visualize button. If you click on that and then you select create visualization, it will take you to this page where you will be able to create different types of charts and graphs to help better view your data. So first you wanna select the type of visualization that you want. And in this example, we're picking a pie chart. Then you can use the filter menu on the right-hand side to filter your data. And just a quick note here, even though we already filtered the data before, when we go to visualize the data on the Open Data website, we do have to filter it again. Uh, and lastly, when you, um, over here in the data selection panel, you can select the categories and the dimensions of the data that you want to display. So here we are able to quickly and easily create a pie chart of 311 service requests created on a specific day and broken down by borough. And then another really interesting way to visualize the data is to see it on a map. And to do that, you would just click on the globe icon. And here we've added a filter to only show requests created yesterday and now we have 311 service requests submitted on a single day displayed on a map in New York City. And just to show one more example of the visualization tool available on the Open Data website, here we see a bar chart of the 311 service requests assigned to the Department of Transportation and broken down by complaint type. Okay, so now you know where to find New York City open data sets how to view information about the data sets, as well as how to start drilling down into the data by filtering and visualiz visualizing. So let's talk about um, how we might work through answering your questions using New York City Open Data. On the next couple of slides, we're gonna walk you through these steps shown here to give you one way that you might go about answering questions and solving problems that you have using Open Data. 
Um, but why might people want to work with open data in the first place? So it could be, you know, exploratory. You just want to poke around and see what's there. But oftentimes people have a specific problem they want to solve or question they want to answer using the data. So the first step is pretty simple. Just ask yourself, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? We give a hypothetical scenario here that you are working for a New York City agency that wants to implement a program to support restaurants by giving out small grants and loans. You want to use open data to help determine which restaurants should receive the funding. You may start by searching to see what data sets exist on open data that could be useful to you. So you could search for things like business or restaurant and see what kind of results you get. There's many data sets that come up with these two search terms, and you're not sure if all of these will be useful to help solve the problem. But now that you have a better sense of the data sets that are available, the next step is to frame some questions that you think these data sets might be able to answer. So based on those data sets, you can ask questions such as which restaurants received a grade A inspection in the last year, or which restaurants already receive city support. So to see if these data sets hold the answers to these questions, what might be a useful tool that Yuki mentioned to see more details and a description about data sets? And you can either unmute yourself or drop it in the chat. So if I'm looking at a data set and I want to, and I haven't really looked into the data too much, but I want to understand more about what might be in the data, what's a, what's a tool that Yuki mentioned that might be useful? Any takers? Filtering, we filter metadata. I see. Okay, great. Yeah. So we can we can we can filter certainly, but even before we even filter, even before we look at the data, there was that overview page, right? And I can even just go back to you and show you. So there's the overview page right here. Right? And this shows you there is a data dictionary. So right here, this data dictionary. So the data dictionary, and sorry, because now I feel like I'm just scrolling through all these slides, so bear with me, but the data dictionary holds a lot of information that, um, that's a high level overview of what's in the data set. So it gives you um, information about the different columns that are in the data set, what they all mean, what the expected values are that you would find in the data set, um, and just generally pri provides you with more detailed description. But what if after reading the data dictionary, you still have questions about the data? Well, you can contact the Open Data Help Desk by clicking on the Contact Us button and a member from the Open Data team will get back to you. Okay, so going back to the question you have about which restaurants should receive funding, you may have decided it should only be given to restaurants that receive a grade A rating. With the data set shown here, you can identify the fields that will give you that information. Okay, so now you found your data set, you found the fields that you think can answer the question you have, it's time to start conducting the analyses. Right here, it shows you've created a bar chart you're, and it's showing the distribution of restaurant ratings, but it looks like there are more ratings with, or sorry, more restaurants with no rating than with an A rating. From here, you can check the data dictionary again and see if there's some significance to what a restaurant with no rating means. Or if that information isn't there, you can go back to the open data help desk, that contact us button, and you can ask them about the data set. Maybe they'll have, um, they'll direct that inquiry to the agency that owns the data set. Um, and I, as an open data coordinator for the parks department have received these inquiries where people are asking, what does this thing exactly mean? Um, and, and somebody will get back to you. Okay, so you've looked through the data, you've, oh, there it is, you've looked through the data, you've created a visualization to better understand your data, and now you're better equipped to make a decision or a recommendation about which restaurants sh should receive funding. So before we move on, um, onto your questions for us. We want to let you know that there's plenty of ways to stay involved with open data even after this presentation. So to ask a question or report an error on open data, you can contact again the NYC Open Data Help Desk 
or visit um, nyc.gov slash open data slash engage. And you'll get assistance from the person or the agency that manages the, the data that you're using. And if you can't find data that you're looking for, you can actually request a data set. So if there is data that meets the definition of NYC open data, the agency that manages it will be required to respond with the date when the data will be made available or a public explanation of why it cannot be shared. And then you can also check out more of the projects and tools that are on the open data uh, project gallery. So new projects are continually added and maybe one day you can submit a project and we'll see it up here. And then as you probably already know, as Zachary in the beginning mentioned, this particular event is part of Open Data Week. Um, this is a yearly festival. This year, there's going to be events until this Sunday, March 13th, and some are in, uh, in person and many are virtual. So to find out more, you can visit open-data.nyc. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and hand it all over to you guys for questions. Yes, please. So on data sets like that Department of Health restaurant inspection set, or more recently say on the open restaurants inspection set that was uh, posted in January, uh, when, you're, when you're doing the map visualization, what is the best geographic field to choose? So so I know, you know, sometimes there's latitude, longitude, street addresses sometimes all in one field. Sometimes it's broken out into street number, street name, and so forth. So, and then there are some other records. So, even with just the example you had on the screen for a moment ago, if I wanted to, when you visualize those inspections on a map, what field are you choosing to at that at that point of defining the, um, the geographic field? I actually just did a project on Open Street on restaurant. Um, mm -hmm. And I did a spatial visualization on Python, um, but I think I used the map one, the point, um, the line ones, um, not the data set itself. So if you go, go to, op are you talking about OpenStreet locations, right? Uh, no, oh, I'm, I was working from that same restaurant inspection table that you used okay. really careful a few moments ago, which which serves the the question. So they have, you know, the 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 address of the locations are broken yeah. out in building number field, street field, you know, and, and so that's, how, do you use more than one field when you're visualizing and you choose a map and you well, want to yeah. display on a map? I think it depends on what exactly you're visualizing. But for example, if you're doing a map of um, which area has the higher population of um, grade A inspection or and grade C um, results, um, mm -hmm. I always use a longitude and latitude usually. That's the best way to visualize spatially. Um, you can also combine with other spatial data um, or like the boundary data, which has, uh, which some are on New York City open data, but we there are also other data sets from New York City planning where you can merge and visualize. So longitude and latitude is probably always the best and or polygon um, ones are good too. Okay, thank you. Latitude and longitude, thank you. And then, David, just to add a little bit more um, to your your question, um, if you're looking to visualize and map specifically on New York City open data, um, every data field has its own type. So, for example, if there's a date, it should be uh, the type should be date, and if there's a location field, um, there, there's it should be a location type. And with that, um, the way New York City Open Data works um, is that there actually has to be, in order to visualize it without opening it in another program, it has to be a single field that has both latitude and longitude. Um, yeah. So if you're running into problems with, let's say, the restaurant inspection data, the reason that's not working is because it's split into two different fields. So like what Yuki was saying, in another program, it'll work because you have that latitude and longitude, you could locate it, but it's actually not going to work on the visualize, um, the visualize tool. Ah. With that, um, one, that's something that with new data sets, we are looking to improve and ensure that if there is 
um, latitude and longitude that it's able to be visualized. And then also we'll, we'll fix the restaurant inspection. So it's able to be visualized easily on, on the open data site. So that is probably why you're running into problems. That's really, thank you. You just explained, cause I just run into a dead end where it says it wants a geo, uh, yeah. a geo reference field. And ju- uh, but just, I can only choose one field. So that explains it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Let me actually just quickly share my screen. Um, so you could see what I'm, so everyone could see what I'm talking about. You should be able to see my browser window. Mm-hmm. And you see location is recommended when I'm in the map view mm-hmm. because, and you see there's like this little um, pin, like right. you would see in like Google Maps or something. And you see these other fields of a T for text, or they have like a calendar for date. If you don't see, and, and you, see, you see latitude and longitude, they just have the, like the, the pound sign for number. Mm-hmm. They're not actually, the, the way open data is reading them, it doesn't read them as a location. It just reads them as a number. So you have to, if you're not seeing that little like pin, you mm-hmm. won't be able to visualize it on open data, but you could definitely contact the help desk and we can fix that if, if you do see that latitude and longitude. Well, that's you combine super, them into a single field. It's super helpful. I know this is really down keystroke stuff, but it's- That's it's, why we're here. It's just so useful to know that like, it's okay. It just doesn't do that. You just have to do it a different way. You know, maybe take it out to another application. Um, and I think that's, when I try to show this to new users, that's one point where I, I, I myself have been fumbling and it just, it's just helpful to know how the answer plays out. So thank you. Okay, that's fantastic informa- uh, information. I have another question here from Tifon Herring from Community Board 10. Uh, she's wondering if this information is copy paste usable in a business plan or proposal, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know, if Sarah or Yuki, if you would like to speak about it further, um, I can also, if you'd like, you know, all the information is downloadable in the CSV as Excel, and then it's completely open so that, yes, you can include it in a business plan. I would say not only can, but but please do. We love yes, to have please do. use yes. open data. That's why it's there. <laughs> Um, so you could use it for any purpose. People use it for commercial purposes. Um, re- really, we we would we like if you if you cite us and link back to the original source, so your other people could reproduce whatever you're seeing. But um, you know, open data is completely free once it's once it's made open. Fantastic. Okay, I have a question also from well, Linda makes a comment about historic landmarks. I know Linda, if you would like to unmute and uh, elaborate on that, perhaps. Yes, I'd like to know if there's if I was looking for information about landmarks in a particular area, particular community, how would I, where do I go to find that kind of information? Is there, is there data sets for landmarks? Yeah, absolutely. So I can just quickly share my screen and show you, uh, let's see. So I just did a quick search, um, going back to the open data, um, landing page. So if we go to open data landing page and just type in landmarks and um, just kind of not even doing historic landmarks, but landmarks in general, there's 44 results. Maybe that's too many. Maybe that's enough for you to look through, but you can kind of go through here. There's historic districts, landmark complaints and violations, um, individual landmark sites, you know, maybe in here, there's something about it being historic. I'm not sure, Um, but certainly something, uh, that you can explore just by searching in the in the search bar. I don't know, Zachary, you want to say anything else or anybody? I would just say again that if you're not quite sure what data set to use, um, definitely reach out to after taking a look at the documentation, the the landing page for the data set, and the data dictionary. Um, reach out to our help desk if you have any questions, and someone from our team or the agency responsible will get back to you. Thank you so much. Okay, so the next question I have is from Zeshan. Uh, is an MFA design and tech student from Parsons. He'd like to know if there's any internships available from the data department this summer. I am not sure. I don't think we'll have any internships on our team, but I would recommend um, that you take a look at um, really many city agencies have data departments. So if you're interested in data, there's, there's probably um, a, a department that has some sort of data-related internship for you. Um, and if you look at the... Um, I could put a link in the chat to the like central um, internship site, but um, otherwise I would say like, think about an agency or a topic you're interested in and take a look there. I don't know um, if other people have anything, anything to add there. And I, I see Zeshan, you had your hand up. Feel free to unmute yourself if you had a more specific question. Hi, uh, good morning. I'm 
thank you so much for organizing this. Uh, um, I've done, I have given a lot of input um, for my um, studios and my uh, projects from NYC. So that's why I was really into the website. And uh, there are a lot of, like I'm mostly scrolling through the websites to get information and data. I'm new to the city. Also that gives me a lot, about informa lot of information uh, about the city. Uh, but uh, one thing that I, I didn't see a lot, which is I was doing a research on how political, uh, uh, how how people are getting, uh, I don't know if this information is public or not, but funding related to political campaigns, uh, which are public. So it was not, uh, I was having a lot of difficulties finding that kind of data. So I wanted to maybe do a, a research on that. I don't know how things work in, in New York, but that's where I was interested. And there was limited data available on this uh, this topic plus the internships i i would work i would love to like do something with nyc data so um sarah or yuki if you want to speak at all to that for zachary of course there's a there's some data sets on campaign contributions for candidates for city office um during um election cycles in a couple of years i think the newest one might be uh like 2013, I think. Um, I'm not sure if more granular data sets is available on New York City data, open data. Uh, in the chat also, Zeshan, I just want to point out that Alessandra points out, I highly recommend looking at the Civic Digital Fellowship um, just to get a sense of other types of programs <clears throat> related to political funding that may interest you. Just to help the person who was just speaking, most of that campaign data for New York City level is at the New York Campaign Finance Board website, and it's published in both, uh, you know, sort of pre, preset reports and then data you can pull. And to add on to David's answer, um, they're, they're, they also have the same information on New York City open data. Um, as I think Yuki was showing, there's, there's a page that shows each city agency and you could click onto Campaign Finance Board and see all of their data. And in fact, they had a session earlier in the week um, giving people sort of a walkthrough of, of some of the newest data that they, they've published. Um, and like this session, um, I see Eddie, Eddie Mark had a question if there'll be a Zoom video. Um, this session and, and pretty much every other session is recorded. So if you go to open-data.nyc, you could see both that campaign finance video, but also this session uh, later on. Thank you so much. So uh, next question I have here is, are open data sets compatible with analysis programs like SPSS, SATA, R, et cetera? If so, what format should I download? And so, uh, you know, I can say myself that I default to the CSV, comma separated values tables, CSV for Excel. Uh, if anyone can speak further to those specific applications, please do. So when you go to a specific data set um, and click export, you can see all the um, formats you can download. So that includes like CSV, um, RIS, XML, um, sometimes it's shapefile. So it really depends on the data set and it is definitely compatible with um, those um, programs. Fantastic. Gabe, does that answer your question? Do you have any follow-up questions? No, it, it does answer my question. Thank you. I think I just have to go in and find the specific data set that I want and then figure out what application to, or what format to download it in. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. It looks like I have a follow-up comment here and question from Tifon. I noticed the maps covered beyond the NYC region. Does the data provide information beyond NYC if needed? If not, does this platform exist state to state or a national database? So I can speak to that a little bit as well. Data.gov uh, is the United States at the federal level. Um, and you will see these types of municipal data sets also exist at the state level. And here in NYC, where it is law, it exists at the city level. Uh, yes, thank you, Zachary, data.gov. And you'll start to see that the standard practice among these municipalities is, is changing and unifying, but there is going to be differences between the different states and how they present the data, how what visualization tools they allow. So it's it's good to have a primer of understanding of how these data sets work from state to state, municipality to municipality. 
Um, if anyone else has any comment on that, Yuki or Jeffrey or Sarah. Yeah, I mean, this is a New York City open data um, session, but of course there are open data websites for other cities. So for example, I'm doing like a project on about Newark Airport. So we're kind of analyzing the ridership from um, both New York State or New York City and also from New Jersey. So I had to go through some data sets from New Jersey's um, open data platform. So if you're doing kind of like a regional analysis or something, you can definitely check out like New Jersey, Connecticut, um, beyond. So, but it might be a bit hard to merge or something, but the platforms relatively looks quite similar um, and it's definitely easy to use um, if you're familiar with New York City Open Data. And then just one quick thing to add there. Um, if you're looking for data sets both within the region, within the, the state or the country or internationally, um, I would recommend Google has a data set search that, that's pretty robust and, and gets all of the open data platforms in cities and countries around the world. Um, and then to Yuki's point about like merging different data sets. So let's say if you have um, a data set of, um, I guess, like, like school testing outcomes, let's say in New York City, and then you want a similar data set you found of school testing outcomes in Los Angeles, um, you could potentially find different fields that they have in common. And that way you can make more of a direct comparison between them. And one tool that actually just launched um, earlier this, it launched a few years ago, but there's a new multi-city edition um, of this tool called Scout. And it'll help you to take a look at data sets um, and see the fields they have in common so you can potentially use them together. Um, I just put a link to, to Scout and the, the data set search um, in the chat. And wow, for, for sharing... For sharing the slide deck, um, we'll put a link on the Open Data site and the Open Data Week site um, and follow up with all the attendees as well once the recording and the slide deck are, are shared. Thank you so much. So at this point, I don't see any other questions. It's about 11.47. Um, so I can ask uh, another basic question um, and maybe just to remind everyone, uh, I think this is a pretty confident crowd. Does anyone else have any comments or feedback or questions that they'd like to include today? I'm so impressed with everything. Everyone's been able to contribute across the panel of attendees and presenters. Okay. Well, I think we're in, in pretty good shape. Um, the only other question is if perhaps uh, you could talk a, a little bit more just or just maybe drop the link for the help desk one more time in the chat. I, I think that that's something that Oh, wait, when Eduardo asked, do you have a listing of all of the APIs available? Oh, specifically for NYC. I, That's actually, I sorry, think, go ahead, please. Please. sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry, please, you go ahead. Yeah, I think if you, um, there's actually a, I think a page that talks specifically about API and how you can get um, API from each data sets. And again, if you go to, export um, quickly. You can also, um, actually not export, there's an API tab right next to export. And if it says access this data set via API and there is an API docs, uh, which I can share it with you right now. So this link will. And for anyone who hasn't used an API before, don't quite know what that is. Um, it's basically a way to connect um, one computer with another. So if you're, let's say you want to write an app and pull in automatically um, New York City open data, you can do that through this API connection. Um, or even if you want, you're just using the data in Excel and, and don't want to have to like pull in, let's say new through on one data every day, you could have this API connection where automatically as new data comes in every, every morning, um, your, your data would be updated. I would also say um, to Yuki's point, like there, there's op there's an API essentially for every open data data set. And if you want to see a list of all the open data data sets, um, I just put a link in the chat for that data set list. It's actually a data set of data sets, which is very meta, but is something that exists. So uh, Eduardo asked a follow-up question. From a philosophical perspective, is it the government job to provide visualization tools or is that more the realm of citizens? I, I don't know start. if there's an exact... Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, I don't know if there's an exact answer to that question, but I like it. Um, I think it's, I think it's both really. I think that like, you know, from our, 
speaking, you know, from somebody that works at a city agency and um, is familiar with our data sets, I know that sometimes we have more of the context of what is included in the data set, how the data is con in, um, collected, and kind of that context helps inform how we're going to create the visualization to be able to make it more understandable to the public. Um, but at the same time, I mean, this is open data. This is ac accessible to everybody because we don't want, you know, us to be the only ones completely controlling the narrative. Like we want to be able to, to allow people to do their own exploration and create own tool, their own tools. So um, I actually, I know it's not like the best answer, but I kind of think it's it's both, you know? I agree with everything Sarah said. Um, I would just add that if, if you saw earlier in the presentation when Yuki was going through the project gallery, which are contributions, visualizations um, for members of the public, and then also the maps gallery, which are from New York City government, there, there really is both. And, and the idea um, is, is to just be able to share these different ways that people from different perspectives are using the wealth of data sets that are made available. Fantastic. I, if I can also just philosophically, I try to equate people with the idea that open data is another layer of infrastructure for the city. It's not just, it's like the water, it's the utility. Yes, we'll see fountains in the city. Is it the citizen's responsibility to make the fountain? No, but um, it's just, it's an amazing way to showcase the infrastructure that exists under the city, so. Yeah, to, to that point, um, a lot of the biggest users of open data are the city's own employees because it's a really easy way to just get information from your own agency or another agency and, and make use of it. Yeah, and I also think that not only is the tool kind of what government should offer as a infrastructure infrastructure but also the training and data literacy is something that um, New Yorkers deserve and I think um, we all should have that so that we can better leverage this platform and really it's about storytelling it's about attracting fundings <laughs> it's everything so I think tools of course the platform of course but also the training and do you have the skills to really um, speak to the data well said, Yuki. So the, does anyone else have any final questions? Um, this is a, a pretty well-informed group, I have to say, but I just wanted to make sure to clarify. Um, if I were to download a CSV file, I could use that in Google Sheets as well. Is that correct? Sarah yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yep. Yep, you could either like copy and paste it directly into Google Sheets or there's that upload when you're in your Google Sheets document upload file and you can just select it and it'll it'll be in your Google Sheets. Great, thank you. Well, we just have a couple more minutes. If there's any um, lingering questions or if you'd like a few minutes of your sunny day back, any closing comments from Zachary or the ambassadors, my fellow ambassadors? I'm just going to briefly say that if you like what you've seen and you want to find out more, um, Open Data Week is still going on. As I mentioned, we'll have recordings up on our website. Um, I just put a link to that in the chat. Um, I'll put an actual link now, not just the website itself. But um, and if you if you are interested in becoming an Open Data Ambassador yourself and um, helping us to teach more people about open data, bringing open data to your community, um, bringing open data to communities around New York City. I would also encourage you to sign up for our next cohort. We have um, this, this newest group of is 20 some open data ambassadors and we're, we're always looking to have more people really in, in from every different perspective. Even if you haven't used open data yourself, um, we'll make sure you're well prepared for, uh, for teaching open data to others. And, and just really, um, again, thank you so much to uh, Vanessa, to Sarah, to Yuki for volunteering to um, be part of this program and for helping us to share open data in sessions like this one.